for the background music, my very rough voice. So welcome to, uh, welcome to the Corning booth here. I'm going to take the next few minutes and talk to you about Corning's newest innovation, Gorilla Glass 3, which uh, we're, we're introducing with native damage resistance. So when you walk away from here in a few minutes, you're going to know what NDR is all about. Okay, so first of all, uh, I want to flash back a couple years. Talk to you about CS 2011. So that's really the first time we went out and started really promoting Gorilla Glass in itself. Today, as I stand before you, we've got Gorilla Glass on over a billion devices worldwide. We've got more than 33 brands we work with. We've got almost a thousand devices, unique devices out there, smartphones and tablets that it's on. So we're going to talk about what makes it so great out there. One more year, fast forward. Recall last year. If you're like me, you can barely recall last night. But if you recall last year, you remember we came out with Tough, just got better. Okay? 20% thinner. You can actually take a cover glass on a device, save yourself some weight come down 20% thinner and still retain all the same damage resistance that the original Gorilla Glass afforded you. So that was a good story last year. As we circle back around and, and before I go on to Gorilla Glass 3, I want to thank all of you as the consumer that got us to a billion. So this is an odometer that's going to keep rolling. We're going to, we're going to keep uh, updating the world via Planet Gorilla on how this product should proliferate out there and help them protect your coolest devices. So one thing Corning does really well is we circle back in at the end of uh, you know a CES, we say, hey, what does the consumer really want? Right. So after after we introduced Gorilla Glass 2 last year, got things ramped up, we circled back in and said, you know, what else is it that we're trying to solve out there? And one big thing and one big theme that kept coming kept coming back as we listened to consumers was scratch resistance. Right. From a very young age, we all hate. I mean, it's it's pretty unanimous. We hate scratches. Right. You hate it in your sunglasses, you hate it in your car door, you hate scratches in your phone, your tablet. If there was something we could do to help out with that. Why wouldn't we do that? And so Corning doesn't like to solve easy problems. We only take tough problems and above, and that's what we did. We took all our scientists and said, what can we do to change things? And that's where Gorilla Glass 3 with native damage resistance was born. All right? So what is that all about? Here's the crux of it right here. That's a nice voice inflection there. I've got about 20 minutes of cumulative voice left, and you know, 5 p.m., that's when the voice goes. I'm done. Native damage resistance is all about enhancing the glass's ability to withstand flaws. We look at an alternative cover glass here on the left-hand side. This is magnified. You can see when glass takes a beating, what happens with other glasses out there? You get these ugly radial lateral cracks. What that is, that's a time bomb under the surface of the glass, okay? And on the surface, highly visible, but the next time it takes an impact, either in the vicinity or somewhere around it, that cover glass is going, okay? That's what's happening right here. So you've got many starter flaws sitting there ready to go. Take a look at what Gorilla Glass 3 does. So as I look at native damage resistance with densification, what's effectively happening is that glass is absorbing, okay, absorbing the impact and not letting any of those little cracks get out of the zone. So if I hit it again there, and I hit it again, and we'll show you what we're talking about here, the glass is protected. Not only that, but to the naked eye, this is a whole lot more visible as you sit there and flip your phone in the sun than something like this. So Gorilla Glass 3 has three times the scratch resistance than Gorilla Glass 2. 40% less visibility on something that does get on the surface of your phone or your tablet. And then when it does get there, it's going to take a pound and a lot better the next time around. You come out of the car or you drop it on the counter or something like that. So we think we got something that people are really going to like. Let's take a look at a comparison. Again, it's all about scratch. I'm going to show you a little demo here. We take a noop and denner, it's a little uh, pencil looking thing with a diamond on the end, and we'll, we'll literally apply the load harder and harder and watch the scratch run on four simultaneous samples coming across. Okay? I'll start this little video here. And what you'll see is a, just a straight up cover glass scratch comparison test. Alright? The load is going to show right up here in Newtons. Start up with zero, and here we go. Strength and the line almost immediately. Start showing that. Here's a competitive glass today. Over on the right hand side, we've got Corning's Gorilla Glass 2 and then Gorilla Glass 3. And as I keep ramping this load, look how ugly that gets. Pretty soon, this one's gone. That actually fails right around four or five newtons. Competitive glass today fails around six newtons. Now, Gorilla Glass 2, good as it is, starts to show those scratches a little bit more. It doesn't fail, but compared to Gorilla Glass 3, under the same conditions, you're not seeing almost anything on Gorilla Glass 3. Okay? All right. Now, let's take a static view before we go over to the toys here. So, the live demo we're going to show you, we've got a couple magnifications. This is a little bit more clear static image of a competitor glass 
with a 7 newton scratch. You see how under that scratch is? Same load applied to the Gorilla Glass 3. So you can see side by side how they look. What we're going to do is we're going to put those two to the test here. I'll shift over to myself and John, who's going to help me with a, uh, a demo here. So what you can see is we have a couple of toys up here and a camera, which, which is what we do every year. We go away and we make toys and then you know, we use them for things like this. So this is a tube with a 135 gram steel ball loaded up in the front there. It's at a 10 degree angle, it's a little ramp here. We've got a convenient little receiver down here that we're going to load in with Corning smartphones. This is why we don't make smartphones, folks. They're pretty ugly. We make glass and ceramics really well. We don't use smartphones very well. But what this is going to help us do is hold it in the right place and simulate that ball coming down and putting a, a force on it. Each of these glass samples, we'll show you, have been already scratched on the back side, seven newton scratch, okay? A little more visible, on, much more visible on this than it is on the Gorilla 3, okay? But it's there. So we're going to load this in. This is a 0.8 millimeter thick competitive glass. And what John is going to do is pull the pin. We're going to see what happens. How's that look? Okay, you can see it right up front here. Didn't take much to come right down. Again, once it's taken a little bit of use, those little lateral cracks, you just lift the fuse on the bottom. There it goes. All right, glass fails. Let's load in Gorilla Glass 3. This is actually a 0.7 millimeter sample. It's a little bit thinner than the competitive aluminum glass. Same 10 degree ramp. Let's see what happens, John. Okay, I can tell you, that, that's probably looking pretty good. Okay, scratch on the back of this thing doesn't show anything. All right? Oh, we're not going to stop there, okay? I mean, that'd be pretty boring if we just stopped there, right? So let's take it up a notch. This is going to take it up to 30 degrees. And if you, you run the calculations from your uh, from, uh, physics classes way back when, and flip back through the books, you'll find it's three times the impact energy that's going to be imparted on the glass. Before uh, we just, we're not just going to tee up a competitive glass and break it again, we're going to show you aluminum, okay? Car door material, airplane skin. This is 0.8 millimeter thick aluminum, loaded in the smartphone. Very poor cover glass choice, great for showing impact energy. Let's see what the ball does to the aluminum. All right, I saw it from here. Pretty ugly. Puts a nice dent in it right there. John's going to take it out, kind of flash it for you. You can see the impact energy. This is just to get a feel for what's coming down the pipe, hitting the cover glass here. All right? All right, let's shift over to Gorilla Glass 3. Okay, same thing, three times the impact energy. Flawed glass, it's been scratched already. Let's see what happens. A couple bounces there, nothing, nothing on that thing. All right, how good does that look? Looks really good. But we're not going to stop there because we have yet again another little toy. So let's take that same glass that's been scratched and beat upon with a steel ball. John's going to put this in a lever press, two concentric circles, and put over 100 pounds of force on it. Again, this very flawed glass, just from this angle, unmagnified. I can see the glass doing this. Which is what any material like that thickness would do is deform. Nothing. You can see he's redlining, he's pegged the G meter there. That's well over 100 pounds that's been exerted on the glass. How's it look? It looks great. I don't see anything on that. It looks great. All right. That's what native damage resistance is all about. It's about glass taking abuse, it's about not seeing the scratches as much, and it's about withstanding the next thing that comes along. Okay? So, what I'm going to do at this point is uh, just direct you. First of all, I've been playing with a very nice toy up here. So this is a Perceptive Pixels 82 inch multi-touch. This has a big piece of grill glass on front of it. Okay, so great multi-touch display up here. If you look around our booth, there are some other uh, displays that have large cover glass featured on them. So grill glass is not just prolific in smartphones or tablets. It's making its way into a lot of other applications as well. I'm going to turn it over to Jamie here in just a minute who's going to tell you how we get all the good content onto these devices that we beat up in this fashion. He's going to talk to you about optical cables by Corning. So, Jamie, go ahead and take it away here.